Welcome as we continue our journey through the Word of God. Today we're going to be looking at the last verse and a half of 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to be looking at the second half of verse 16 and then verse 17 today. The Apostle Paul writing this from a cold, dark prison cell in Rome to Timothy. Timothy's the pastor of the church in Ephesus. Paul's about to die. He knows that. He's desperate to see Timothy. He's really starting to tell Timothy some, some, some truths here in this part of his letter to Timothy so that Timothy will know what to hold on to when Paul's gone. And so he's just said these amazing words that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And then he goes on to say, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, it's profitable. We looked in the previous talk that all scripture is given by inspiration by God and it's profitable. What's it profitable for? Doctrine, telling us what to think. That's what doctrine is. What do you think about a certain topic? The Bible tells us what's true, what to think about God, man, the world we live in, the world to come, uh, end times. It's, it's profitable for reproof and correction. It has the ability to rebuke us, to correct us, to get us back on the right path. When we live under the authority of God's word, the Bible then exposes what we think uh, or, or any conduct that we have as being wrong. And if we're wrong, we're wrong. God's not wrong. We're the ones who are wrong. It's profitable for instruction in righteousness. It tells us how to live a life right with God, uh, which means that we can understand the Bible if all scripture is profitable. That means we, there's every part of it is for us to be able to understand. And if the Bible was not, was not able to be understood, it wouldn't be profitable. Now, there are some parts of the Bible that do contain mysteries, and the Apostle Paul talked about that. It's talked about in Deuteronomy chapter 29. Uh, so we have these parts of the Bible that are mysteries that are still being revealed. What we see through church history is that as we go f further through church history, more mysteries are revealed through prophetic scripture. It's profitable, but it, and, and I have to, I have to st state this as clearly as I possibly can. It's profitable when we understand the Bible literally. Guzik says this, when we take the Bible literally, we also understand that it means what we take it as true according to its literary context. When the Bible speaks as poetry, it will use figures of speech that may not be literally true. One example is when David said, all night I make my bed swim and I drench my couch with tears in Psalm 6.6. Obviously, David spoke in a poetic metaphor and he did not actually float in his bed with tears. But when the Bible speaks as history, it is historically true. When it speaks as prophecy, it is prophetically true. This is how we are to look at scripture. The truth of what David said was that he, he had cried so much. He used a metaphor to describe the depth of truth of how much he cried. Now, why? Why is it profitable for that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work? Timothy, Paul says, you have to continue doing these things because the Bible is what makes you complete. The scriptures, that's what will make you complete. That's what will equip you thoroughly for every good work. Complete means that you don't need anything else. There's no other book that needs to be written. There's no other holy scriptures. It's something that gives us an understanding that if I'll just be a hearer and a doer of the word, remember what Jesus said, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, him I will liken to a wise man. We're called to hear and we're called to do. And if we do that, that's when we'll be complete in him as a Christian, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, when, when you allow the Bible to speak to you and, and, and you trust its truth, that's what makes you complete and transforms you. Physics says this, the Bible gives us eternal life. 1 Peter 1 23, the Bible spiritually cleanses us. Ephesians 5 26, the Bible gives us power against demonic spirits. Ephesians 6 17, 
The Bible brings spiritual power to heal our bodies, Matthew 8, 16. The Bible brings us spiritual strength, Psalm 119, verse 28. The Bible has the power to spiritually build faith in us, Romans 10, 17. So many people get discouraged because they feel that they don't necessarily get a lot when they read the Bible on their own, and then they just stop and they give up. But we have to continue to work to understand the Bible the best that we possibly can, read it thoughtfully, read it carefully, and then it'll benefit us spiritually, even if you don't understand it all intellectually. But yet again, this is why I do these uh, recordings, is to help rightly divide the word of truth, to be a teacher of the word. That's part of the calling on my life. Not to just be somebody who records, uh, makes recordings of me reading the Bible, but teaching what I believe it means. Now, uh, let me share with you a great story from David Guzik. He said there's a great critic once wrote a letter to a magazine saying, over the years, I suppose I've gone to church more than a thousand times, and I can't remember the specific content of even one sermon over those many years. What good was it to go to church 1,000 times? The next week, somebody wrote back, over the past many years, I have eaten more than 1,000 meals prepared by my family. I cannot remember the specific menu of any of those meals, but they nourished me along the way, and without them, I would be a much different person. The Bible will do its spiritual work in us if we will let it. <laughs> Paul began this wonderful chapter in 2 Timothy chapter 3, warning Timothy about the dangerous times that he was about to enter. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians have been swept away by those times, and they have been carried off to a point where they don't trust the Word of God, they don't believe it, they're not complete in the Word of God, and it hasn't brought all the things into their life that it could bring because they haven't trusted it. You and I have to stand strong on the Word of God. We have to literally stand on the promises of God. We have to stay focused on the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I've, I've said it to many people, when, uh, if you want to increase your faith, just read the Bible more. And whether you understand it or not, through the power of the Holy Spirit, supernaturally, your faith will be built. What do you observe out of this? i tell you what I observe. I observe the Apostle Paul getting very desperate with Timothy, making sure that Timothy taught the church, which includes now me, 2,000 years later, and you, the importance of reading the Bible and doing our best to study it and to bring life to us because it's profitable. What do you get? Tell me down in the comments below. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that all scripture is profitable. Uh, thank you, Lord. God, it may not always be profitable the way we want it to be profitable, but it always adds value in its own wonderful, supernatural way. I pray, God, that we would continue to have a determination to stand on your word and every promise that is for us and it's every promise that is yes and amen in Jesus Christ. Thank you for those. In your name we pray. Amen.